In some previous videos, I introduced the idea of proofs by induction, and uh, today I want to talk about a variant of induction called strong induction. So remember uh, our motivation for induction, we have some uh, uh, proposition P that we're trying to show for all natural numbers. We kind of imagine proving this chain of implications, right, where we start by proving the base case P0, and then each one will imply the next one, and that's going to give us uh, all the natural numbers. But sometimes um, this doesn't quite work. So sometimes, for example, um, it can be difficult or even impossible uh, to prove each proposition from the previous one. So for example, maybe it's not possible to prove P4 from P3, but maybe it is possible to prove P4 from P2. We can imagine this kind of thing, right? And maybe uh, P3, you know, maybe in order to prove P3, you have to know P0 and P1, both. So, and the question is, is this okay? Uh, does this still work? And uh, in fact, it does work because as long as each proposition uh, only depends for its proof on previous ones, um, this is going to work out fine. So if we start by proving P0, uh, that implies P1, P1 implies P2, and now we already know all three of these are true, and so uh, we can then conclude P3 is true because it's implied by P0 and P1. And then in this scenario, P4 is also true because it's implied by P2, and we already proved that. Okay, so as long as each one just depends on not necessarily the one previous one, but on something before, um, it's going to work just fine. And so this is the idea of uh, proof by strong induction, where we don't uh, just assume the one previous proposition, but we assume all the previous ones. So So here's the principle of strong induction, and this is our first take, because we're going to do a more general version in a minute. Um, the idea is it's going to be very similar to uh, induction, so we prove uh, that the proposition P holds for 0, and for all K and N, and here's where we would have said uh, P of K implies P of K plus 1, but we're going to say Hey, if p of 0 and p of 1 and p of 1 and dot 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 p of k, if all those together imply p of k plus 1, right, then we get to conclude that the proposition P holds uh, for all natural numbers N. Right, so this is, the, this is the important difference right here. Instead of just assuming P of K as our induction hypothesis, we're going to assume that P holds for all the previous numbers, 0 up to K. <clears throat> so there's a couple ways we can make this a little more general. Um, so one thing is, uh, we might not start at zero. So we saw in a previous example where uh, we were doing a normal proof by induction, um, but our base case wasn't zero. We Our base case was, uh, I think it was four in that case. Uh, and we can do the same thing here. We might not necessarily start at zero. The other thing that happens here is that sometimes, um, like in this example where uh, in my fake scenario where P of 3, we actually needed to know P of 0 and P of 1. Um, sometimes you need more than one base case because you need, uh, you know, each proposition might need multiple previous proposition, propositions in order to prove it. Um, we'll see an example of that in a, uh, a subsequent video, but um, we may need to have multiple base cases and, and make sure that we always assume multiple things here. Okay, so. Uh, the induction step might 
require uh, multiple previous propositions. Okay, so here's take two of the uh, principle of strong induction. So we assume not P of zero, but P of B. B stands for base case. So whatever our base case we want it to be. And uh, we're going to say for all k greater than or equal to uh, b plus j. So j is going to be some, like, how many cases we actually need in order to get going, in order to get our induction hypothesis, our induction step off the ground. Um, so we're going to assume, you know, p of b and p of b plus 1 and dot, 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 um, all the way up to, I'm going to run out of space here, uh, P of B, uh, no, what do I want to say here? Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, yes. The point of this is that, of this number two, is that we actually need more than one base case. Uh, and I, I forgot that as I was writing this. So we need to assume P of B and P of B plus one and dot, 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 and P of B plus J. Right, these are all our base cases. Okay, and then we assume that for all K, greater than or equal to b plus j, p of b holds, and p of b plus 1, uh, and all the way up to p of k, if all of that implies p of a plus 1, okay, then we can conclude that for all n, p of n. So uh, there's a lot of letters in this one, um, and uh, we're going to see an example of this, and I ho hopefully the example will make it a little clearer. Um, uh, one last thing to mention is that uh, the name strong induction makes it sound like uh, this is somehow more powerful than the induction we talked about previously. It turns out that's not true. So uh, normal, or we could call it weak induction, and strong induction uh, are entirely equivalent. So hopefully it's clear that using strong induction, you could prove uh, weak induction. Uh, it's not so obvious that you can ask, actually do the other, other way around. So um, just using normal induction, you can prove that strong induction works. Um, you can read more about that in your book. Um, but sometimes it's useful to distinguish which form we're using, um, not because one is str really stronger than the other, but just because uh, it's helpful as humans to communicate how we're, what kind of proof we're doing. So in another video, we'll, we'll, uh, a couple more videos, we'll do some examples of proofs by strong induction.